this podcast is part of the Big Heads Media Podcast Network. Go to BigHeadsMedia.com for more great podcasts. Welcome, everybody, to the Skeptical Skeptics Podcast. I'm your host, RJ Metzger. And I'm Rachel Metzger. And we're on episode 37, finally. So episode 36 and the blooper episode were, well, the blooper episode has been going for like seven months. Episode 36, I think we recorded more than a month ago, like 32 days ago, 33. Something like that, yeah. Yeah. Um, so I know I apologized in the blooper episode, but Rachel wasn't a part of that. So sorry for the last month that we haven't put anything out. Uh, Blame RJ, it's 100% his fault. Yeah, I've been traveling for like nine weeks. Um, I know you guys know that, so... I will continue to complain about it. But anyway, so to pay you back, we said we were going to do double episodes this month. Um, but we decided to do something a little different with the second episode every week. Um, one, because I just simply don't have the time to, ep- to um, edit two full episodes. Um, but two, also to take advantage of it, um, we are going to do like stories that we kind of were caught in between a special, but we also didn't want to do just a normal episode on it. Um, so for instance, this week, it'll be the Winchester house and, and we'll do some stories kind of like that where, um, we we're not sure we ever would have done a special for it, but at the same time, it's so classic that it probably deserves more than just a, uh, regular episode. So if you have any like classic haunts or anything like that, that you want us to talk about, um, go ahead and share it to our Facebook page, um, or anywhere, Twitter. I don't know why I just said Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, uh, our email, skeptical skeptics at Gmail, where it's skeptic skept pod and everything else. Um, or on our website, skeptical skeptics.com. Oh, which by the way is the top thing in Google. Now, if you actually uh, Google us, yeah, our website it was like not even available. It was like on page 417, <laughs> but which is really dumb. Cause if you go to any other ghetto browser, like uh Bing or duck, go or, Freaking ask Jeeves. Yeah, I was going to say, Jeeves still even uh, a thing? We were number one for like ever, but Google was just really slow on the uptake. Um, we were not bougie enough for Google, apparently. No, we weren't, not for a while. So the last mini sub that we're going to do, um, or if it's super long, then we'll make it a regular episode or whatever. But anyway, um, we're going to do a Q&A. Uh, this is something Rachel's been talking about for like ever, because she likes it when people do q and Yeah, well, when I listen to a podcast or watch a YouTube channel or whatever, I like feeling like I know the person, and I like having the opportunity to like get to know them at least as well as you can through a screen slash microphone. Um, so yeah, I thought it would be fun to do a Q and a and you guys can just ask us anything. Like you can ask us obviously things for the podcast. You can ask us things about our lives, about our likes or dislikes, about our relationship, about our kids, whatever. We don't care. We're open to whatever. Just, I think it would be a fun idea to do that. And if you guys totally hate it, obviously let us know. But I just think, I don't know. I fully enjoy those episodes as a podcast listener. So. Well, here's the reality. So if you guys don't give us enough questions, then we won't do it. So that, that, that'll that let us know that you think it's a dumb idea. Um, but anyway, so yeah, if you want to know stuff about us, um, I will actually post in our like uh, buffer queue thing for social media. That way we don't suck. Um, every single week, it'll prompt for Q&A questions and you can just kind of ask and then or we'll, you can we'll answer just- it. Post it on our Facebook wall or on our Twitter or send it to our email or whatever. It doesn't have to just be. You totally can. If you don't see the question somewhere, just go ahead and ask your question. Send yeah. it to us in an email, like our voicemail on, number, Facebook email or whatever. Yeah, like you can send it to us in a voicemail at 361-233-2853. It's 361-233-2853. We will not answer them anywhere, but on that episode. Yeah, we'll answer listen. them on that episode. We won't answer them on our posts or anything so that... Well, I mean, it's not to make you listen, but at the same time, it'd be kind of lame if we just well, answered like everything. Point. Yeah. Right. So, um, so yeah, I mean, if you don't want to support us with one download, then okay, fine. Um, but anyway, so Whoa, that was some, that was a little shady. Well, I'm just saying, like, why would they listen to this and be like, you know what? That's an episode I'm not going to listen to. <laughs> like, it's just kind of weird. Um, but yeah, so try to get us those. Um, like I said, if you forget, I'll put it on the social media. It'll uh, it'll post every single week. Um, so anyway, this week. Slash month, we have some people call out, and I guarantee I missed out on a whole bunch of people. So he did call our day out for the fool he is. What? If you miss them. Oh, the fool I am. Yeah. I'm the only one that does any work this on this dang show. This is your job. <laughs> All right, anyway, so there's Adam Scheffler, which by the way, and I'm sure you've heard this, and I apologize, but I guarantee, but I guarantee I'm not the first to say it. I thought it was Adam Schefter. That was, I know you don't know him, he's a sports guy, but. 
I thought you were Adam Schefter and that you liked our podcast. And I'm not going to say I was not. I was disappointed when I found out you weren't. Uh, but I really thought like the the man himself dropping uh, NFL bombs on uh, Twitter was liking our podcast. Which is funny because if I saw, if, he, if it was actually him, I'd just be like, who the heck is this? Yeah. But anyway, Adam Scheffler, glad it's you instead. So uh, thanks for reaching out. Cassie Needle, um, Nidell, Nidell. Um, I'm trying my best. But Cassie, thank you for reaching out as well. Steve Murphy, I'm sorry for letting you down by missing it yet another week after I said that we weren't going to miss a week. He was the one that was like, still no episode. That was, that was Steve Murphy. Um, Attack 12 from Instagram. Uh, Super Albino, I like your name. Uh, Crocodile Yankee, same boat. Um, Dustin Zia, or Z, not sure. Um, yeah, and I guarantee I missed out on some people, so please reach out. Oh, Lisa Gua was our patron. Uh, I shouted her out last episode, but um, just so you know, I did answer you on Patreon. I'm sorry it was super late. We just don't get patreon messages so i was like really late on answering you um but i did answer you and i will also say on here to everyone um if you do join patreon we are still sending out stickers and we will also work with you on merch um if you want some so uh feel free to do that kelly and Britt, um they big shout out to them um are getting a special shirt i'm back home and have access to photoshop again so i will finally be able to do some mock-up designs of rachel's catchphrase which is I don't like that. It's true. Anyway, so I'm going to work on that and see if I can come up with a pretty cool shirt and work with both of you on that. So thank you again for supporting the show as much as you do. It means a lot. Um, By the way, if you've ever wondered like, hey, why is it always hard to do this as shout outs? And then you think, wow, he really butchered that name. I did it. You did it once, I think, and it, it was terrible. It was a terrible experience, and I'll never do it again. I don't know why I'm incapable of pronouncing words I don't know, but I am. I'm also the only one that... uh takes uh what's it called notes throughout the week to have them all together so like you don't even know who to shout out <laughs> anyway. anyways <laughs> it's this true. did not need to get rude but okay <laughs> yeah. all right so this week in the news um there was a giant penguin found uh, I believe in okay, Antarctica. You need to stop saying a giant penguin. Found. <laughs> to me, that means they found an actual penguin that was this size. It is an actual penguin, but no, it's but dead. No, but alive right it's now. It's been dead for like 37 million yeah, years. Yeah, he told me, he said, oh, they found this giant, <laughs> giant penguin. penguin. And I was like, I want to meet this penguin. And he showed me a picture and I was like, why is that a fake penguin? It's a model of a penguin. Because it's a fossil and he did not Which say also, that. Which also, it's a bad model of a penguin because they said it's 6.5 feet tall and 200 pounds. And then they put it up against a quote unquote average woman and it was like shorter. I don't know where they're getting their numbers. You imagine just walking around and seeing a six, six, and, a half six and a half foot, foot tall, tall penguin. penguin chilling. That's freaking crazy. I'm waddling at you. Freaking big bird, but <laughs> real. Um, all right. So what are you talking about this week, Rach? I'm going to be talking about the mysterious Arkansas bird deaths. Nice. Oh, um, by the way, so I did put out there on social media. Um, people seem to like the uh, blooper episode. However, it took way too long for me to gather all those bloopers um, because despite how goofy we are, a lot of our bloopers are like severely offensive to people as well. <laughs> so it takes a while to kind of pull them up. Um, but anyway, so what I will do, be doing from now on is cutting out any bloopers and just pasting them onto the end, end of episodes. That way you don't have to wait six or seven months. Um, and that way, like you could probably piece together the context of when the blooper occurred too. Like we already have some stuff, uh, like we were being ridiculous while doing mic checks. So I have some of that. Um, but yeah, so if we have any good bloopers throughout the episode, then it'll be on the end. If there's nothing on the end, it's because the blooper will have offended your soul so i cut it or it's just a whole lot of like yawning and yawning, mispronouncing burps, words uh sadness just us talking to dogs um it's yeah it's a good time he breaks he breaks um rachel talking about euros longingly that was oh, a good one i should have stared at it for so long anyway um what are you talking about Already, oh, the birds. I said yeah, it already. got it. Okay. I'm going to be talking about the UFO car incident, which was shared with us by Andrew Sear, I believe. Crap. I said Sear last time, and I think it's Sire, or I said Sire, and it's actually Sear. I'm pretty sure it's Sire. So thank you, Andrew, for sharing that. Um, also, please keep sharing stuff. I, I think you've shared like two or three things mm -hmm. by now. Um, so yeah, any anytime you see something that you think we'd be into, yeah, keep sharing it because these have been great. Um, also makes my life a lot easier because then I don't have to like go find something. Um, so I selfishly, you have to do work for the podcast. 
you're one to talk. No, I, I, hey, I didn't say about me. I'm just making a joke. Calm yourself. Anyway. God, you're so aggressive let me start with, tonight. <laughs> I'm not. You are. Uh, so let me start with, um, well, I'm just tired and grumpy. I'm sorry. Um, Andrew said that his wife grew up in Warren, Minnesota, which is where this story occurred. And then he kind of summarized the story for me, which I will tell as well. Um, but, and I'll also tell what his job is because it's very interesting in relation to this. But he said that the second reason it hits close to home for him, other than the fact that his wife is from the area, is a couple weeks ago, his father-in-law came to visit and Andrew noticed that uh, his father-in-law's windshield was broken. Uh, the father-in-law said he had been in Thief River Falls mowing the lawn for his mother-in-law. Or, yeah, <laughs> I guess for his mother-in-law. I don't know. And uh, on his way back to Warren, in broad daylight, his mis- his windshield mysteriously broke for no reason. Which, again, I'll tell you the story and it'll make more sense. Um, what was even more strange to him was that it took him over two hours to get home, but it's only a 40-mile drive between uh, where he was and Warren. And on top of all that, his satellite radio quit working for that time. So Andrew has skepticism about the story I'm about to tell. And so do I. But we're still going to talk about it. Um, So in 1979 in Warren, Minnesota, where Andrew's wife is from, Val Johnson is a cop and he was on a night patrol. And around 1.40 a.m. on Highway 220, he noticed a blinding light. um, And he says, I quote, notice a blinding light. Um, it was a very bright, brilliant light, eight to 12 inches in diameter and three to four feet off the ground. Johnson said in a taped police interview at the time, the edges were very defined. Now, many years later, he said, quote, I saw a ball of light. I drove towards it and suddenly it was in the car with me. It's unexplainable and will remain so. I'm happy with my mental stability, right? End quote. Um, so Johnson drove towards the light. Woke up in a ditch a half hour later with burns around his eyes and depending on the reports, burns on his retina that were consistent with um, welding burns as far as the skin right. and consistent with looking into an incredibly bright light uh, for the retinas. OK, mm-hmm. the windshield and one headlight of his 1977 Ford LTD were smashed and both radio antennas because it had a regu- radio antenna and then it was a police car. So another radio antenna were bent sharply back at a 90 degree angle. OK, um, so like square, right? Mm-hmm. The watch on his wrist and the clock on the dash both ticked 14 minutes slow. And remember, he was asleep for 30 minutes. OK, Okay. so um, this it blew up and went all over um, the nation. It was on yeah. yeah, a bunch of newspapers. He went on Good Morning America. It was, it was a huge thing for almost a full year. But anyway, so um, it attracted the attention of a man named Alan Hendry, who's from the International Center for UFO Studies. And he studied the car with his you know own like eyes and everything. And it was uh, he, he obviously thought it was unusual. Everyone did at this point. But he got a glass expert from the Ford Motor Company. Uh, to look at the windshield damage. And um, so I believe Andrew said he's a auto glass technician as well. So he knows about this and is partially why he's interested in the story. But anyway, the glass, this expert said, was shattered in such a way that the that forces, it shows that forces were coming in and back out at the exact same time. Huh. And that's how it shattered the glass, okay? Mm-hmm. Um, and this glass expert also noted that all the damage to the car uh was from front to back on the vehicle and was with us sh- in a straight line only about a foot wide which included again the headlight and then the, the windshield and all the way back to the back of the car right okay um another expert looked at the 90 degree curves or uh, bends in the antenna antenna um antennae that's that was right the first time anyway uh and determined that it was a high velocity air blast that did it which could you imagine? I mean, it's an antenna. Like it doesn't get that much, catch that much air. The surface area is very small. So right. for it to bend at 90 degrees, like I, I can't even imagine the type of air blast that was. Um, and then there was essentially no conclusion to this investigation other than, Hey, this is weird. Um, so the Marshall County, County historical society actually, uh, has a museum and has kept the car intact and with the damage. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And it, Andrew actually got to go see the car. So you can go see it. Um, if you're anywhere near up there. So, um, obviously this kind of grew to its own like thing and, and, and really blew up. Um, Val Johnson himself said that he just felt like, uh, he may have seen something he wasn't supposed to. And then, um, like somebody took action against him. He said at one point, 
Uh, but then he also said that uh, he, quote, looked up at the sky and said, well, shucks, what happened? And then he, quote, shuffled on with his life. <laughs> <laughs> Which I love that. What a great response <laughs> what a great to that happening to, to you. Shuffled on <laughs> well, with my life. Well, shucks, what happened? <laughs> and then I shuffled on with my life. Um, but anyway, uh, and then so, again, it kind of like built its own lore like it always does right mm-hmm. and so depending on what you read they're gonna say oh val johnson's an incredibly hard man to find nowadays he's a recluse he doesn't answer calls about this or whatever uh well whenever whenever one of these reporters that i read reached out to him he said quote people don't call about that anymore <laughs> <laughs> so yeah and he like totally took the call he answered the phone he started laughing whenever he heard the word ufo he was really chill about it yeah he said sometimes like um ufo like enthusiasts will come by with like a theory and he said, quote, we all sit in the backyard with lemonade and talk. They'll tell me what they thought happened to me and I'll nod at appropriate times and eventually they go away. Why does Val Johnson sound like the cutest man ever? I don't know. He really does, though. I already like him. Um, but anyway, so uh, I, it, you know what I noticed from having um, edited all these episodes? I say anyway, so, so much, like all the time. Um, I try to cut them because I get annoyed by them. Mm-hmm. But anyway, so. Um, <laughs> Yeah, so you have all this, like, damage, right? He has these burns on his eyes. Um, now, Andrew actually has a theory that I hadn't seen anywhere else, but I like it. Um, he says uh, he has skepticism about the UFO car because it's not far um, from the Grand Forks Air Force Base in mm-hmm. uh, North Dakota. And it was during the Cold War when this occurred, right? So he could have seen a very fast moving and low flying aircraft, which caused the damage and maybe even some head trauma. Um, Okay. Now, it doesn't necessarily explain the burns or the missing time. I mean, it's not a perfect fit, but it makes a lot more sense. A a tiny UFO that entered the vehicle, right? Yeah. Um, Super weird. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's one that... uh, it just doesn't fit the normal UFO story pattern. Mm-hmm. Um, and the the big thing that like they pointed out in several articles I read, which is true, is even the most credible witnesses very rarely come up with this amount of corroborating evidence. Right. Yeah. Because his story was simple to the point and his car shows exactly what happened. Right. Which fits exactly what he said. Yeah, happened. There was no like extra stuff or things that were unexplainable or no. And he whatever. never expanded his story. Really he just said, yeah, well, I mean, I don't know. I shuffled on with my life. Right. So, um, yeah. So it's just one of those ones that, uh, it's such a simple story. And I think we mentioned this before multiple times, but the more simple ones are almost easier to believe. Right. Like, Oh yeah. Well, there's just less, well, it could have been this or it could have been that or it could have been this because the more I feel like the more details you get, the more easily explained away the details are, if that makes sense. Yeah, because each individual one holds less weight. Yeah. yeah but the fact that it's just these very simple, like, this is what happened. This is what the car shows. Yeah, exactly. And they line up, right? Right. I mean, that doesn't mean 100 percent that it's a UFO, but 100 yeah. percent. It something happened. Yeah, that's so for sure. Val Johnson himself is not sure it's extraterrestrial, but he, but he said that he can't rule it out. Like he just has no clue what happened. I think that's such a legitimate way for him to go about his life. Like he just yeah, he's not like jumping on the stage and being like aliens were in my car, yo. He just said like I don't know. You know this is what happened. But the scre- and this uh, the tire screech marks that that he left a hundred feet. That's not the way to say that. I know. A screech is a yell. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what but the right... But it's not right, a scratch either. I it's don't a, know what the right word is, but I know it's not screech. Sh- it's... It's a... It's a it's a tire... <laughs> yeah. Hey, uh... Mm. I have no idea. What, <laughs> when you're swerving to miss something but it's and not you that. break... It's a it's scorch. A, I can't remember. It's a scorch mark. We both have lots of, like, internet access. What do I look? Tire marks. I'm going to put it. Screech. It's not a screech. <laughs> it's a. Tire marks. Skid. Skid. Skid marks. Yeah. So it skidded for like 100 feet. He ended skidded up. Skidded a word? It's skid. It skid for 100, 100 feet. feet. <laughs> he ended up in like face first in a ditch or nose in a ditch, right? Right. Nose um, of the car in a ditch, not his nose. Potentially his <laughs> nose too. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's just, it's a hell of a thing. Um, oh, you know what? Side sidebar. Do you know that, um, this is total side, this is so random, okay. but I think All right, whatever here we go. it happened. I'm prepared. Um, you know, that old couple in Titanic Yes. that laid in the bed and died. Yes. 
That was based on reality. So there was this old Aww. guy. Yeah. This is the most random thing. I know, I know, I know. Right I was just thinking of, um, yeah, that old couple is based on reality. These, uh, this, this man, um, whenever they were evacuating, mm -hmm. his wife was offered a seat, but, uh, he wouldn't take it like the seat next to her, which they offered him because he was an older guy. Right. He wouldn't take it because there were still women and children aboard. Right. So she wouldn't let him stay. So she got off and offered her seat to more women and children. And uh, they were last seen on the deck of the boat just together. Cute. Very stupid. Why is that? That's like the saddest thing ever. Right. But it didn't have to be. It was a choice. He was saving other people. I get it. But the you completely sacri sacrificed your, your wife and your wife's life. Like if well, the they were both old, though. These were children. I That's get the it. Point. I get it. I'm just saying. Wow. All right. So we know who you'd be in the Titanic. Yes, we do know. Are you serious? I'm the women and children. That's literally me. I'm the women and children. I'm the woman who has two children. Well, anyway, I should be said, the first ones on that freaking they, boat. They sent their young maid and wrapped her in the wife's fur coat. And then they okay, were, that's cute. Yeah. They gave her their seat. And then, uh. They were last seen on the deck of the boat together. I just feel like if that was me and you, even at an old age, like you'd be like, I'm not going. I'm going to give them a seat. And I'd be like, well, I'm not going in there. And you'd be like, bitch, sit down. Oh, yeah. I would make you go. I would make <laughs> like, you And stay. then I'd start fighting you about it. Yeah. And then I'd get off and then I'd be all like, fold my arms. And that's how we die. Yeah. Like me and you like. Mah. Yeah, just pissed off. <laughs> I can't believe you're so, <laughs> you're so selfish. You won't I can't listen. believe you're so stubborn. Like, yeah, you won't even just boat. get on the boat. <laughs> We die angry at each other <laughs> because of the fight. <laughs> anyway, all right. Like I said, random sidebar. Um, Super random. I don't know. I'm tired. All right. Let's take a break for some ads having nothing to do with Titanic. This week, we will be promoting a show that we just adore and love and support wholeheartedly. Like every other show. Every single we one We do of ads them. for. Every single one. So go check them out. I'm Midnight Agent Raw. And I'm Okami. We are the Super Media Bros Podcast. Each week, we give a comedically informative take on movies, music, television, video games, and much more. Put your shades on and listen to all episodes on SuperMediaBrosPodcast.com, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts. Yeah, shades on. We're off. So I want to take a moment to talk about PodCoin. It's a new app that's out there that actually pays you to listen to podcasts, which considering you're listening to our podcast, I would think maybe you're interested in this. Um, for every 10 minutes that you listen to it, you're going to get something called a PodCoin, which you can use to rack up uh, gift cards or stuff for charity. So like we do calories for dogs or like dog food as Rachel so adamantly wants me to call it, but they count it in calories. And so dad gummit, we've donated like 9,000 calories to pups. Um, it's pretty great. So no other podcast app lets you do that. So check it out. Podcoin use our promo code. Skep skep S K E P S K E P all caps, no spaces, and you'll get 300 free pod coins, uh, for your session with Podcoin. So, on December 31st, 2010, in a neighborhood in New Year's Eve, BB, Arkansas? Yeah, BB. Okay. I know about this. BB, Arkansas. About 5,000 red winged blackbirds freaked out, mm -hmm. um, were flying er erratically, and ran into the sides of buildings and died. Yep. There were more than 5,000 that did it, but 5,000 was the amount that died. Um, so in case you didn't know this, I don't know this. Blackbirds have really bad night vision and don't fly at night. Like they go to sleep. Like most birds, actually, I guess. Not many birds flying around at nighttime. Anyways, um, they also don't normally fly low enough to smack into houses or else that would be happening all the time. Mm -hmm. They fly above buildings. Um, so obviously, like the first idea was, oh, these all these blackbirds are dying because of the fireworks. Because it's New Year's Eve. Right, right. right. Um, so they have, of course, like a weather radar in the area and it can, uh, can catch bird migrations and things like that. Um, so according to the radar at around 1030 PM, the first like set of birds started flying and going crazy. 
And then again, at around 1120, the rest of the birds came out and died. So all of this was before midnight, which I'm not saying no one does fireworks before midnight, but obviously like the big amount of fireworks is not until midnight. Um, so they did the autopsies on like on a lot of the birds to make sure. And they did not find um, any kind of bacteria, viruses, heavy metals, pesticides, or av- avicides in the birds' bodies. Avicide, yeah. Um, that could have caused their death. Every single bird died from blunt force trauma. Mm-hmm. Which, like, by the way, this is a nightmare. Can you imagine just, like, walking no, around? No, I really couldn't. So- <laughs> you're seeing there's 5,000. <laughs> yeah. And, not and like, blackbirds, which uh-huh. are, like, the omen of death, right? Could you imagine... <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine waking up to it though oh that's being, so much worse yeah being alive in it would suck being but waking up to it the just massacre and it's in a small neighborhood it's in like yeah this is not like the whole town it's bb god dang arkansas well and it's a neighborhood in bb arkansas so it's like the oh little town of in arkansas and then the little na- just and it was like literally every bird came out and died in that neighborhood's <laughs> somebody was like area let me test out my new bird calling app. <laughs> <laughs> it just went horribly awry. Yeah. So this is a nightmare. This is not something I would. Of course. Yeah. And can you imagine I wonder like, how many people thought like the apocalypse was oh, occurring? For sure. For sure. Can you imagine like walking outside with your children in the morning yeah. and they're just like. We're not going to school, kids. <laughs> we're not going anywhere. <laughs> yeah. Like we're getting in the bunker and, you know, holding out until the, the apocalypse is over. Um, we should have a bunker. Sure. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of work and money. Where would the bunker be? Like it would need to be somewhere near our house. We live in a neighborhood. I mean, under the house, that's normally. We live in Texas. You can't go down there. That's why we don't have basements. You still can. Well, yeah, you can, but it's way harder. All right. Well, anyway. Anyways, um. I'm not a basement expert. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not either. I just yeah, know no, that, you're like, just speaking out. Your no, butt. I just go to. Every Texas house, and not a single it's one has a basement. Probably because of the water, but I'm not gonna go out there on a oh, limb. I think that is it. I'm pretty sure, yeah. So we would have a water-filled bunker. bunker. Yeah, well, I'd rather have wet feet but be alive. I don't know if I would. You get really wrinkly, really cold. That's worth dying. Maybe I don't like being inconvenienced. Ah, uh, you would be the <laughs> Titanic lady. <laughs> This lifeboat's a little damp. Let's get out. I mean, life kind of sucks. If it got like that much worse than the apocalypse, I think I'd be like, just take me. This is fine. Could you imagine if we just walked out, saw a bunch of birds and then went into the bunker and found out that like the world was totally fine? It's just weird birds. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Um. So obviously, because they believe the fireworks caused this, the town decided to be nice to the birds. And the next year, that whole um, the whole town of BB did not set off fireworks. That seems... Um, that seems so stupid. It's like every year this has never happened. Right. One year it does, and it must be the fireworks. It's not like back when fireworks first started to become a thing. They've been a thing for, for like a hundred years. Right. This is the dumbest thing. But they okay. wanted to be nice to the birds, which is like, and yeah. also maybe they didn't want to traumatize everyone again. Like it's maybe. like, they don't, I don't even know. care about I the think birds. That's dumb. I don't want to wake up like, hello, it's a new year. Oh no. <laughs> Correlation causation. Yeah. Anyways, um, so even though they did that, on December 31st, 2011, around midnight, um, about 200 wet red winged blackbirds started flying out radically and ran into buildings and died. Um, this is a year later, you said? Yes, on, the same, on December 31st, 2011. Are you serious? Yes, the first one was December 31st, 2010. This one was December 31st, 2011. Okay. And with, with the ban. Yes, they did no fireworks. Wow, okay, yeah. okay. And I mean, even if they did, it might have been like right, a right, home right, firework still, or yeah, two. Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, but this time there was only 200 compared to 5,000. Okay. It's a little better, but still, obviously something happened. Oh, that's weird. I yeah. didn't know that it happened again. Yeah. Um, the only really explanation that anyone has ever attempted to give to this, because, you know, they tested all the birds and there was nothing, there was no kind of diseases yeah, or anything same, that could have caused last time, this. Yeah. Um, some believed it was a sign of the end of times. Sure. Especially because of the belief this was of the eight years ago, but Mayan, sure. Mayan apocalypse, apocalypse yeah. in 2012, right? right? So I'm assuming, obviously the first one everyone was like, oh, well, who knows? But once everyone was talking about the end yeah, of the yeah, world in 2012, sure. they were like, this is this is." Well, it. and at the same time, you're like looking at, well, is this going to happen every year until the world's over? Right. right. But and it, it hasn't. It That's hasn't. the weird no, part. No, it stopped. It was just those two years. And then after that. Oh, that's so strange. I guess if it did happen, it must have gotten small enough to where nobody cared. Like, it was like, oh, it's five birds this time. Yeah, it's just like, maybe there's some dead regular birds. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Yeah, I didn't know it repeated. That's so weird. See, because, like, 
the thing about the bird erratic behavior, at least what I heard or what I had read before is, um, sometimes it can be explained with their, I think their, uh, their internal, like sense of direction and what to do. A lot of it's like magnetically derived. Right, yeah. And so like, if we have like, you know, shift or something, whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, or bombarded by the sun or whatever. Yeah. I'm not an astrophysicist, but anyway, so, um, uh, or I'm, I'm, I have a biology degree, but not in birds either. I don't know anything about them, but, uh, yeah. So maybe, that was it, but then for it to do it exactly a year later, that's right. insane. It's one thing if it was like the next day, sure, more yeah, could yeah. happen, yeah, right, 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 right. But no, the it was exact ex- year. the same day, wow. around the same time, a year later. Wow, that's a hell of a thing. I don't even know I what know. to say about that. That's I awesome. Mean, I there's that's one of those that it's just like. I mean, no matter what the reason, that's cool. I to me, the only thing that could make sense is genetics and the birds. No, but the day to make them to go the day? crazy. I don't know. I yeah, mean, but to yeah, the day, but like, that makes it has sense. to be like maybe. I don't know. They got to a certain age, and it was just like this is the moment. Maybe someone just has a really ourselves. obscure New Year's Eve tradition, and they were like, you know what? I'm not doing it after 2011. That's it. I'm. I'm well, over. What would it. it be? Because like, if it was any kind of like Dubstep, poison or I don't know. <laughs> dubstep makes the red the red yeah. backwards are like i can't kill me now right and it's like really obscure like bubblegum octopus and so oh, God. It's I, not would even do, dubstep, oh, but I would not blame them yeah no it's, it's terrible music pretty much trash i'm um, so sorry for anyone from bubblegum octopus there's no chance <laughs> there's zero chance <laughs> you know what i take it back i'm not sorry your music is trash <laughs> it's not get it out Your bad cat how man is a good you, song how much did you pay for that cd 87 cents right at walmart yeah but this was 2007 money so it's like oh buck 80 me. now Woo. anyway um yeah that was a strange episode for us yeah it was a strange episode um what constitute for constitutes a normal episode well maybe one where we don't go on a titanic tangent right in the that middle of not it not both of us i know um the bird story i would love to give it more i just literally have I, no more yeah, thoughts there's nothing. i have no more thoughts yeah i know I, I i knew it was short but i was like this is worth talking about no it's super worth talking super about weird. that was awesome yeah um but anyway so if you have any comments about the birds or, or if you've read something i mean it's been or like eight you years happen to live there and see it yeah, that'd be really cool too i'm sorry but also it's amazing yeah the ufo car as well um so thank you again andrew for that um, so there's probably a blooper or two where I'll keep it in, but just so you guys know, uh, we were just talking about how, uh, for some reason it just really feels like we're restarting the podcast, even though, I mean, in a sense we are, but we know we're not. Um, but that just reminds me to say like, thank you all for listening. Um, I know I always say that, but really I do mean it. Um, after a month, Appreciate like, you. yeah, exactly. Our, uh, uh, you guys telling us you missed us and stuff really means a lot. Um, and gets us, you know, to keep putting out episodes. So also this episode feels a little bit shaky. We're sorry. Please. Yeah, it does. Feel we'll get back <laughs> in the groove. We promise. Yeah. yeah we got to knock the rest off somehow. Um, it's like preseason, right? <laughs> so, there you um, go. but yeah, so it just, it just really is nice to, to hear about that. But, um, yeah, so our confidence is kind of gone, but we'll, we'll get back to it. Um, and like I said, just thank you, thank you for hanging in there. Um, and if we did lose a couple of you along the way, then I'm super sorry. And hope we, hopefully we, you know, you come back and then you hear this like three months later, like, oh, I never should have stopped listening. But <laughs> or like, no wonder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is trash. <laughs> um, just don't listen to episode one, for the love of God, please. Uh, or two. Two was the worst. Oh, two's painful. Worst. The first three are pretty bad. Yeah. Four, four is pretty okay, but I haven't heard it in a while. Um, anyway, so yeah, we'll get back to it. Um, our recording schedule is going to be just wonky. My work schedule, even though I'm back in town, is still just really up in the He's air. working an insane amount. Yeah, I'm so. working a lot. So um, I'm just trying to sneak it in any chance I get. So uh, yeah, so Wednesday is probably not going to happen dead on time every, every single time. But we're I'm definitely going to get it out. Um, so I appreciate and that. We'll let you know when it's coming. Like even yeah. if it's not consistent and perfect, we'll at least be like, this is the day it's going to come out. Or today is the day. At least. I don't know if we'll really do that, but we'll try. We'll try. <laughs> All right, we we'll could try. probably do like that morning. Yeah, well, just or like text in it the on middle now. of editing. No, I can't do it now because I don't know when editing. you're going to do yeah, it. Yeah, in the middle of when you know yeah. it's actually happening. An hour and a half before it comes out. Yeah, hey guys, we're go. actually going to put it I didn't out. say how much before. <laughs> so it'll probably be a couple of days late because we're, uh, chances are what we'll really do is record during the week and then on the weekend at night I'll be able to edit and then we'll put it out. But um, anyway, so check out the Winchester House episode. I'm excited about that one. Um, Coming. It'll probably be short because there really isn't that much to it. But like I said, it's a classic ghost story. So, um, yeah. All right. Have a good week.
Bye. <laughs> the frick frack snick snack is going on here. Are you ready for this? Are y'all ready for this? Yeah, but you said get ready for this. And it's I did not. These rither in so uh Andrew Cut. God, I'm so tired. Action. Andrew had uh, has skepticism about the UFO car. Um, Can you explain to us what the UFO car is? Remind to me. Remind me to come back to his skepticism. So cut. Yeah, that should be cut. after. Cut. Oh, the tiny baby bear. Oh God, you stink. Poor tiny stinky baby bear. You are the yawniest person you I'm you've so ever been. I'm so tired right now for I'm some reason. Too. I was not that tired before, and now I'm dying. There's nothing like this podcast to make me tired. Yep. Um, it sounds like we don't even like our own podcast. Why? Because we're just constantly like, oh, oh. You little. Oh. No, it's just called having two kids oh. and you working freaking like 80 hours a week. I know. I work so dang much. Um, anyway. The peaches are straight bruise I can see from here. It's fine. Ugh. You it's and your not it's like fine. That plum. Do not start eating that thing. It's fine. It's not fine for you to start eating it. Shh, shh, shh. Don't. Shh, shh, shh. I'll make it work. Now be quiet. It's going to be juicy. Shh, no, but I'm, you're not gonna, gonna I'm not going to focus when I'm watching you and listening to you eat that eat goddamn peach. peach. Yeah. You can't. No. <laughs> Who can't focus Lawrence, when someone's eating seriously, a peach? Be, Molly, Molly has been annoying enough for both of you. No. You need to lay down. All right. Larry? Anyway? You brought the dog all excited because he wants your goddamn peach. Oh, so the... <laughs> How am I supposed to listen to that while I'm doing my feet? <laughs> God, it's so <laughs> gross. Fuck. That's awesome. Is it a good peach? Nah, it's kind of trash, but <laughs> I really am so hungry. Oh, what's that? Big bruise? Why are huh? you so hungry? You ate pasta for dinner. It's the only meal I've had for that. This is the least surprising thing I've heard. I have some pasta left if you want. So. What is it? I did a build your own. It's Tortellini with vodka, sauce, sun-dried tomatoes, and chicken. Bruh. It's so good. You're good with me eating that? No. You are the Titanic. No, I'm not. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> really? I can't have it? No, you can have it. Oh, I love you. Love All right, too. continue. I kind of can't. I have to sit here and watch you eat that peach like a nasty soul. All right, well, give me two seconds. Hmm? Larry, you don't even like peaches. Yeah, he does. You don't know anything about Larry. I know a lot about Larry. I've lived with him for more than half of his life. Whatever. Why don't we have like bloopers galore now? Mm. Now that I said that we never make bloopers, now we have like a ton of funny things we can go. We, we're kind of a mess this episode. Like it's like restarting all over again. I feel zero confidence in my like, ability. I feel like we're like a new podcast where like two people are listening to us. And yeah, like, I feel okay. no. I feel like they hate us again. <laughs> I do. I really don't feel like we have anybody that listens. My confidence has hit a new low. Watching you eat that peach is not helping. All right, in your trash peach. It wasn't good, but it's gone now. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I just ate that peach in like, what, 35 seconds, 40 seconds? I annihilated that peach. All right, ready? Yes. <laughs>